there are still a lot of people want to hear the, that music from the 60s. It's like anything else, isn't it? You know, people have got memories. People remember where they were, what they were doing at that time, 50-odd years ago. All those hit records in the charts. And what was the recipe for the for the success in the 60s? Uh, most of the songs were pretty easy going. They weren't hard to sing. You could The postman could whistle them. The bin man could sing them, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, you know, it was just... It was just um, a popular era, and it, it's it's stayed with people for so long now. I was brought up on country and western. Wow. Um, like Hank Williams and, and, and that kind of music, you know. Although, of course, you know, you had Lonnie Donningham with the skiffle thing, and it, it was it was out in the sort of late 50s, and I suppose it was around. But, um, I mean, you know, whether the other guys in the band were influenced by skiffle or not, I don't know. But for me, it was country music. And yes, we did sort of start out in uh, ooh, 1957. That was the time when, when you had... America was still churning out Western movies. Um, and I went along to see uh, that great Western movie starring John Wayne called The Searchers, man. The rest is history, isn't it? You weren't the lead singer to start with, of course, were you? I think it was Tony Jackson, wasn't it? Groups in those days, you know, we just... Whoever was in the band at the time, you got a certain song and you thought, you know, who, who's going to sing this? And Sweets for My Sweet, which we actually found in, in Hamburg in Germany. We sort of found it on a, an old Drifters album. And we thought, you know, Tony's voice suits this song. Mm. And so Tony sang it. We had a few good singers in the band. Chris was a good singer. I wasn't too bad. But Tony's voice was great on that record, yeah. He was, uh, I suppose people would say, he was a lead vocalist uh, right at the very start when we started our recording career. In the early days, produced by uh, Tony Hatch, long before uh, Emmerdale and uh, Neighbours and other themes like that and the stuff he did with Jackie Trent, he produced you guys. In fact, I think he played on some of the stuff on piano, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it was quite funny, actually. I remember when one session we were doing an album and actually Tony was on the piano and we thought, doesn't we said to him, Tony... The piano doesn't quite fit in with our sound, <laughs> and he looked as looked at us in astonishment, you know. But but yeah, he the piano can be heard in a few of the songs on album tracks, yeah. yeah. Not on any of the hits though, though. unless no, he was on Goodbye My Love. I'll keep rocking, man. I I, I, I say to the audience, you know, every night. Um, I'm going to rock till I drop, and of course that gets a big round of applause. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know how long there is to go because I'm 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 getting on now. Of course, I've just been awarded an MBE, yeah. which was absolutely fabulous. You know what an honour. And uh, Mike, just one final question: Have you ever considered writing an autobiography? Because you've got such a life story to tell. Funnily enough, <laughs> I have written my autobiography. <laughs> well, I don't know whether you were trying to catch me there or not, but yeah, well, I started writing some years ago, and the actual autobiography has been out now for about uh, ooh, two to three years. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's done well. It's sold all over the world. Really, it was never a number one bestseller. But it actually still sells, and we, we actually take it on the road with us, so people do get the opportunity of, of buying it and actually get me to sign it while I'm there.